that you've got to be part of that change, friends. Now, i got to tell you, we call this the Faith, Hope, and Love for a Change on Election Day Tour. But truthfully, we're traveling with some broken hearts. We're traveling feeling like the religious people in this community, the religious people in this country, the religious people of the United States of America promised all of us that they cared about their faith. They said, my faith comes before my politics. I've heard people say it over and over. My Republican friends have said it. They've said, I'm a Christian first, a conservative second, and then I'm a Republican. And then when the time came for them to stand up for their faith, they reverted and became nothing but an old school Republican. Do you know what I'm talking about? So we're traveling with some broken hearts. And that's part of the reason that we're here. Now, friends, I got to tell you, this heartbroken life, it happens to a lot of people. I'm a pastor out of Minnesota. I know we have some other pastor friends here. And some of us who are in the pastoring world, we know that our own friends in our work, they're having a hard time. A lot of them are talking about how important it is that they stay political but not partisan. So there's all this worry about being political, not partisan. I got to tell you, we're not in a time where we're asking ourselves, are you political or partisan? We're asking ourselves the question, are you prophetic or are you silent? Because if you're silent, then you're complicit. That's what we're living in. We're living in a time where we need a racial reckoning. We need a social reordering. And we need some correction in our political lives. So what we're facing here is a call to be prophetic. Now, there's a lot of people that get nervous about that, and that's okay. That's been going on for a long time. Because if you're like me and you come from the Jesus tradition, and you come from the tradition of Jesus as a prophet, then you know that in the prophetic tradition of Jesus, you name names. See, you name names. You say, if there's going to be leaders that are against human flourishing, if there's leaders who are going to stand up for something of their own political agenda rather than the common good of humanity, you name names. So you call out the Herods, Jesus said. You call out the Caesars. You call out the Pontius Pilots. And in our day, that means you name names and you call out Donald Trump and you don't somehow say, I'm for some kind of common good, but I don't want it to land on the street. That's what the commitment of the gospel is all about. Now, you've been hearing a whole lot of people tell you also that you're supposed to let that little light of yours just be real quiet and be hidden. People that say, don't write so much about this on Facebook. Don't say so much about Black Lives Matter. Don't say so much about faith, not fear, and hope, not hate, and love, not lies, because that makes me feel uncomfortable. But you also know that you come from a tradition that says, oh, you don't hide your light under a bushel of any kind. You don't hide it under the bushel of your friendships. You don't hide it under the bushel of your job security. You don't hide it under the bushel of your 501c3 status. You let your light shine every single day. And in this beautiful sunlight, we're going to be reminded about how important it is for us to let our light shine, friend. Because as Jesus told us, if we don't speak up, the rocks will cry out. And it's time for us to cry out on election day. Blessed are the persecuted. Now, friends, we've got to tell you, this is going to become a bipartisan event today. We're going to ask everybody, whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, a Green Party member, an anarchist, we're asking all of you to vote against Donald Trump on election day. We're not, we're not particular. This isn't partisan. We want everybody to join in the common good and make sure this man moves on out. Now, I could spend all of our afternoon standing up here on these beautiful church steps reminding you what a problem Donald Trump is. I could do it. I could tell you that he's not up for the job. I could remind you that his daily sense of nonsense and discord is hurting this, this country. I could remind you of his denials, his dithering, and his doing nothing that has caused COVID to be more of a problem in this country than any country in the world. I could remind you of his crassness and his corruption and his cruelty, how he's a hazard to the planet and everyone who lives on it. Sure, we could remind you what you already know about kids in cages and soldiers with targets on their back and corrupt leaders and advisors. We could remind you of him saying that the Proud Boys need to stand back and stand by. We could remind you of him saying there's good people on both sides. We could remind you of his consorting with and bribing foreign governments to interfere in our election. We could remind you of daily discord and disregard for decency and honor in this country. But friends, we don't have to do that. The man is like a self-cleaning oven. He does all the work for you. You know that he's unfit for office. You know that he's got to go. We don't have to spend our time doing that. We're not here to tell you how bad Donald Trump is. We're here to remind you how good you are. Amen? We're here to remind you to vote common good. We're here to remind you that you stand for something more than just your political identity. Now, you're going to hear from some people today that we're Republicans. Maybe they still are. But they're saying, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to lean forward. You're going to hear from some people that have never wanted to talk about voting for a president in public. And they're willing to do it now. Because, friends, it's time for the choir to start tuning up. We hear this all the time. Don't you feel like you're traveling around this country and you're not convincing anyone to change their minds? Look, we don't have to convince people to change their minds. People know Donald Trump is unfit for office. What we need to do is get people to change their behavior and act on that behavior and step across the line when it comes time to vote on Election Day. Now, maybe you've already voted, but we're going to recruit you into a number of things as we go forward. Now, I just want to remind you that as a Christian, 
I believe every person is a beloved child of God. Nothing you can do about it, nothing you need to do about it. You're the light of the world and the salt of the earth, including Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the light of the world, but not every light of the world should be the president of the United States, and this man should take his dim little light and let it shine somewhere else and stop causing the kind of havoc that he's causing. Can I get an amen with your hands clapping together, friends? Now look, a lot of people tell us no when we ask them to come to an event like this. A lot of people tell us we can't host this at our church. Political people tell us we're nervous about coming out and being involved in your activity. We hear a lot of no's and we're used to it. That's okay. Because every now and again, like today, we get a little yes from somebody. Some people tell us yes, some people say, yes, I want to be a part of this. And you know who said yes to us? Well, all you good people, they look around, a bunch of yes men and women around here making a difference in this country. 